If you are a training provider and you want to start using Google Analytics 4, or GA4 for short, then this is the video for you. What we're going to cover is what exactly GA4 is and why as a training provider you might want to start using it. We're going to look at how to set GA4 up and in particular, how to do so with inside the Arlo training management system. We're going to look at how to configure advanced and e-commerce conversion tracking and also what you can do with this data. So once the reporting is inside of GA4, how to use that to make decisions that will help you drive more revenue and sell more training. So first off, what is GA4? GA4 is Google's latest version of their analytics product, and it is designed to help you track and report on the people that visit your website. It lets you see where those people came from, so how they found your website in the first place, whether that was through a social media post you made, searching your brand on Google, or clicking one of your ads. It also lets you measure conversions or purchases and the revenue associated with those. And finally, it lets you determine the success of your marketing campaigns. And because GA4 knows where someone came from and also whether they made a purchase or not, it can tie those purchases and the revenue associated back to the source um, or the campaign that generated it. So let's jump into Google Analytics 4 now and show you how to set it all up. Here we are inside our GA4 account. Now, if you don't already have an account, you can create one by going to this URL. Now, the first step we're going to take is to ensure that a data stream is set up. And essentially what a data stream is, is just a way for GA4 to receive information from your website. So we're going to go to the bottom left-hand corner and then click admin and then data streams. Now, if there's already one set up, we can just use that. Otherwise, choose web as the platform and enter the URL of your website. If you're planning to use GA4 to track multiple websites or domains, you can just input one of the domains here. Keep enhanced measurement on and then click create stream. Now there are a number of settings and options to configure here. However, for the sake of time, we will not go over them in this video. The one setting we will need to change is the configure tag settings option. From here, click configure domains and then add all the domains that you will be tracking with this GA4 account. This will most likely be your website domain, as well as potentially your Arlo URL, which will look something like companyname.arlo.co. Once the data stream is set up, we will just need to copy the measurement ID. And for now, we're done inside of Google Analytics. Now, let's jump into our Google Tag Manager account. And again, if you don't already have one, you can create one for free by going to this URL. Google Tag Manager is the system that we're going to use to add GA4 to our website and our Arlo account. And so the first thing we're going to do inside of Google Tag Manager is to create the Google Analytics tracking tag. To do this, go to Tags in the left-hand menu and then select New Tag. Click on the Tag Configuration box and choose Google Analytics. This will give you a number of options. However, for now, just choose Google Tag. Where it says Tag ID, Paste in the measurement ID that you copied earlier. Now click on the trigger box and choose all pages. What this means is that GA4 will be able to track people visiting any page that Google Tag Manager is present. Click on save and then publish the changes by clicking on submit in the top right hand corner. Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics 4 are now connected, which means that anywhere that Google Tag Manager is, GA4 will be able to track. Therefore, the next step is to add Google Tag Manager to our website and Arlo account. To add it to our website, click on the blue container ID in the top right corner. This will give you some code that needs to be added to your website. If you have a team that manages your site, you can just provide them with these code snippets and they should be able to add it to your site for you. Please note that if you use the Arlo website as your company's website, then you can skip this step. Adding Google Tag Manager to your Arlo account is super easy. All we need to do is copy the container ID from the top right hand corner. And now let's open the Arlo dashboard and click on settings and then Google settings. Enable Google Tag Manager and paste in the container ID that you copied. Make sure that activate Google Analytics e-commerce is enabled. And what this does is allows Google Tag Manager to receive registration and purchase information from your Arlo account. And we'll discuss why this is relevant in just a moment. Now, before we go any further, let's do a quick orientation of Google Analytics 4. Now, the dashboard shows some high-level stats. However, you will spend most of your time in the reports section. 
The report section is divided into three main areas, acquisition, engagement, and monetization. There are also user attributes and technology reports that you can use to view your audience by things like country, age, gender, or interests, or by browser or device. Now let's take a bit of a closer look at some of those main areas of reporting. Acquisition is all about how people found your website. Engagement is what people did while they were on your website. And monetization is all about the purchases and revenue. Now there's also retention. However, we're not gonna go over that in this video. Each section contains an overview as well as more detailed reports. In acquisition, you can view your information by user or traffic. Now, if we look at it by user, such as what people's source medium is, it is going to show you how people found your website in the first place. For example, if someone searched for you on Google, and then a few days later they came to your website via Bing, it will show them as Google, as that was the way they found your website originally. If we look at it by traffic instead, it then counts every visit individually. So in the example before, it would show that person in both Bing and Google. Almost all the reports inside of GA4 can be customized by clicking the pencil in the top right corner. Now you can't see it here as I don't have the correct permissions. However, if we look in this GA4 account where I do have the correct permissions, you can see the option. So let's look at engagement. Engagement is where we can see the events that people are taking. Some of these events are tracked by default, such as page view or scroll. However, you can also create custom events to track important actions that you would like to report on, such as viewing a course page or clicking register on one of your courses. You can also view conversions, which are just events that have been tagged as conversions. These are usually things like adding a course to the cart or making a purchase. You can also view all the pages that people view or the pages that people land on on your website in the first place. And finally, monetization is where you can see all the purchases that people have made, as well as the sales funnel to see where people might be dropping off. Now, GA4's default funnel consists of these steps. However, you can also make your own funnel in the explore section. Monetization is the one area which will not receive data by default. We therefore need to manually set GA4 up to track purchase related events. And we can do this inside Google Tag Manager. So first, let's take a look at the Arlo documentation. The great thing about being an Arlo customer is that there are a ton of resources already at your fingertips to make your GA4 setup easy. Our help center has step-by-step -step articles, such as the one we're looking at right here, that include all the snippets of code that you need, instructions, and links. Here we can see all the events and information that Arlo sends to Google Tag Manager. Arlo notifies Google Tag Manager when someone starts the checkout process, as they move through each step or page of the checkout, and once they finish the checkout process. And since we enabled the Activate Google Analytics e-commerce setting inside of Arlo, we will also get an e-commerce purchase event, which includes all the relevant information about the purchase someone has made. For example, the currency, order total, and course name. You can set Google Tag Manager to send any or all of these events to GA4. However, in this video, we will just do the purchase event. So let's jump back into our Google Tag Manager account and create a new tag. For the tag configuration, we will choose Google Analytics again, but this time we will choose GA4 event. Here we enter our measurement ID from GA4, as well as the event name. Now you can use anything for the event name. However, if you would like to see the data in the monetization reports inside of GA4, then we will need to use one of Google's e-commerce event names. You can find what these are by opening the purchase journey funnel in GA4 and then selecting view funnel steps. So here we can see the event names used are session start, and this one is a built-in event, so we don't need to set it up. There is also view item, add to cart, begin checkout, and purchase. We can also look at the checkout journey funnel. This allows us to track how people are moving through the checkout steps. The events used here are begin checkout, add shipping info, add payment info, and purchase. 
So in Google Tag Manager, let's use purchase. Make sure that you use the exact same spelling as we saw in Google Analytics 4. Under more settings, select send e-commerce data and ensure that data layer is selected in the dropdown. For the trigger, we don't want a purchase to be tracked when someone visits any page of your website. Instead, we only want a purchase to be recorded if someone completes the checkout process. We can therefore look at the Arlo documentation again and see that when someone makes a purchase, Arlo sends the information with the name purchase with an uppercase P. So for the trigger, let's create a new trigger by clicking the blue plus in the top right corner and then click on trigger configurations and choose custom event. For the event name, we will use what we found in the Arlo documentation. Now hit save and give the trigger a name. You can name it whatever you want as this is just to keep track of what it is internally. Let's name our tag and then click save. We can now publish our changes and any purchases made via Arlo going forward will show in the GA4 monetization reports. Finally, let's look at what we can do with this data and how to use it to make decisions that will help you drive more revenue and sell more training. This process is often called conversion rate optimization or CRO. And it usually consists of us noticing an area of weakness in our funnel and then making an educated guess as to what might be causing the problem. We can then change or fix what we think is the problem and then keep an eye on GA4 reports to see if things improve or not. Now it is recommended that you just make one change at a time. And that's because if you make multiple changes and then see a change in your reporting, whether good or bad, you won't be able to tell which of the actions you took caused that change. Now a quick tip for GA4 is to use their insights. Insights is powered by AI and it allows you to ask your data questions. You can use it by typing your question in the search bar, such as how many people visited my website last month? Or maybe more complex questions, such as compare conversions from last month with conversions from last August. And here we can see that we got 28% more conversions this August versus last year. There are nearly infinite ways to slice your data and find areas to improve. But let's just take a look at a few areas to get you started. I would recommend that you break your funnel or the journey that people take to purchase one of your courses into sections and then create this as a custom funnel inside the Explore tab in GA4. We can remove these default steps and then create our own. For example, viewing our course catalog or calendar page, and we can create the step by adding the page URL as a condition and then adding the filter and entering the URL of the course catalog or calendar page. And if there are multiple pages that people can view your course catalog from, you can just use the or option to list them all. For the next step, we might add viewing a course details page. You can either set this up by creating a Google Tag Manager event, or if all your course pages contain a particular word or phrase in their URL, we can use that. For example, maybe all your course pages contain course details in the URL. The next step would be getting to the checkout. Here, we can use the page URL option again and enter slash checkout as the filter. And finally, we can add the purchase event for once someone has completed the checkout process. This will be an event and then select purchase. Now that we have this set up, we can choose to start by focusing on the areas that we're seeing the biggest drop off or otherwise known as the highest abandonment rate. So let's look at a few examples. If lots of people are getting to your website, but very few are viewing your course catalog, we could test making it easier to find your catalog. For example, we could try making it more prominent in your website's menu or even adding a button to your homepage to take people to the catalog. If instead, lots of people are getting to your catalog page, but few are going to the course detail pages, a couple things we could try would be to make filtering the catalog page simpler so people can more easily find the courses that they're looking for. Or we could try changing the button text. 
If getting from the course catalog page to the checkout is where the big drop off is, then a few things we could test would be changing or adding additional information to the course description or moving the option to register to the top of the page if it is not already there. And finally, if the drop off is happening between getting to the checkout and then completing the purchase, some of the things you could try testing would be removing some of the fields. Ask yourself, what is the minimum amount of information I need to collect from my users? Because any additional fields could be losing you sales. You can also brand your checkout with your colors and logo, or even copy your website's full header and footer so that it feels like you're still on your website while going through that checkout process. There are also some Arlo features that you might wanna look into, which could help improve your checkout's conversion rate. This includes the deposit feature, which lets people pay a deposit to secure their spot on your course, and then they can pay the remaining over time. You could also enable the Arlo portal, which means that people who are signed in will have some of the checkout fields automatically pre-filled. And finally, you could use Zapier and your email marketing tool of choice, such as MailChimp or HubSpot, to configure abandoned cart automation. And this lets you send an automated email or a series of emails to people who add courses to their cart, but for one reason or another, don't end up purchasing. I hope you found this video useful. And if you have any questions, or would like to see more videos like this in the future, please let us know. And if you would like to book a consulting session to discuss this in more detail, get help configuring the tracking we discussed, or look at areas to improve conversion rate and get more sales, please email support at arlo.co and one of our team will reach out.